How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to change your own brakes on your riding lawnmower. It's really simple, you know, there's not really much tools involved other than a 3 8 socket on a ratchet and a half inch socket on a ratchet. And uh, that's pretty much about it guys. So today we got uh, a Dynamark 8 horsepower 36 inch. This is uh, an older riding lawnmower that we ended up getting uh, for free. One of our customers dropped it off and uh, said we could have it. And we're just in the process of uh, getting this thing running as uh, it didn't run and uh, you know we're refurbishing it like we do uh, many other machines. Uh, painting the deck, uh, getting everything ready. I'm going to be doing a complete video on this so you'll be able to check that out once that's uploaded. But uh, right now we're going to be working on the brakes and I'm going to show you guys how to do a brake repair on basically any riding lawnmower. Okay so we've removed the tire because we need access to the brake down there and it's a lot easier to work on this guys when the tires off okay so once you're up under your machine this here is your uh, rotor this here is your caliper and this here is a bent plate that's got a little warp in it on purpose and uh, that connects to your brake lever that goes down to your foot pedal so the first thing you're going to want to do is loosen this nut off now this is going to be a double nut here guys so you're going to want to loosen this off and once that's loose you should be able to pull that plate right off and then i'll show you what to do next okay and like i said once you get those double nuts off of this uh, post right here you should be able to just lift your bracket up and out of the way now to get that off we used a half inch socket and uh, to get these off right here, guys, we're just gonna be using a 3 8 socket. You wanna loosen those off and then we'll be able to pull our caliper right off. And once you get the uh, two 3 8 bolts out of your caliper, you should just be able to pull it off. Now it's gonna look a little something like this. You're gonna have a bolt on one side and you're gonna have a bolt with a spacer on the other. So I'll bring this over to the workbench to have a better look at it. So let's see what we got here. Here's our caliper and we have two rods uh, in the caliper itself. Now this one is seized and that's why our brakes didn't work because our pad here still has a little bit of thickness onto it. So you can see where it's been wearing up against the rotor and uh, that might still work but I do have replacement pads. So let me try to explain how the braking system works. So you remember that bracket, that plate that we took off over top of here? It has a little bend into it so it's almost going to appear twisted. And that's on purpose, guys. So when you depress your foot brake and the linkage pulls forward, that um, bent piece of twisted flat bar is going to rotate like this. And the side that is bent out is going to press on these rods here. Now, again, that one's seized, but when it presses on those rods, these rods press in to this little box in here, right, which have a little backing plate here and your brake pad there. So again, you press on your foot pedal and it brings that piece of twisted flat bar forward, which then depresses on these rods. Both of those rods press forward up against the backing plate right there, which in turn push your brake pad onto your spinning rotor and bring your riding lawnmower to a stop. Now in this one guys, the rods are seized. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put this into the ultrasonic cleaner. This is aluminum, uh, but the rods are steel so they can corrode over time. And uh, what we're gonna be using guys is a little bit of nickel anti-seize. So once I get all of this cleaned up, I'm gonna uh, punch these rods out of here. We're going to be using a wire wheel on my bench grinder to uh, clean them up as best we can and get all of the rust off of them. And then once they're all cleaned up, we're going to be using again this uh, nickel anti-seize and we're going to be putting them over top of the rods so that uh, they can slide in and out nice and easily. So after using my uh, bench grinder with the wire wheel to clean up the one on the right, you guys can see just how clean it is. Uh, so again, you want to get all of this rust off to prevent it from, uh, you know, getting uh, snagged up inside there and uh, not pushing forward like it should. Uh, another good point to make is uh, the ends of these can get little tiny burrs on them. So what you want to do is take a file and just clean them up and make sure that uh, these are nice and round and as smooth as possible, uh, similar to this one here. So let me go ahead and uh, get this one cleaned up and then uh, I'll show you what to do next. Now here's a before shot 
lot of the uh, caliper here. You guys can see there's all kinds of crud built up. Uh, the main important thing though is that we clean up the uh, insides of these holes here because that's what uh, these little rods are going to be pushing through on. So you want to make sure that surface there is nice and smooth. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up, maybe uh, take the wire wheel to that on the outside, get it nice and clean. Okay, so I got the caliper cleaning and the ultrasonic cleaner. Now we're going to take a look at our brake pad here. So uh, this one right here is uh, our used one and you guys can see there's uh, a little bit of a difference, not very much. So uh, I'm going to try to reuse this one here uh, without putting a new one on. I got a couple replacement ones here. You can get those at your local small engine shop and uh, they're not that expensive but uh, it's always good to have a couple on hand. Uh, especially for us we're working on these machines all the time I've taken the backing plate here and just cleaned it up on the wire wheel just to get some of that rust off and make sure that uh, all the edges are nice and smooth okay so our calipers now out of the ultrasonic cleaner I've taken it to the wire wheel and uh, just cleaned it up as best I could inside and out guys and uh, if we could see a little before and after shot here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like after. You guys can see big difference, especially uh, on the insides of uh, these holes here. Everything's nice and clean now. So what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of nickel anti-seize and put them onto those rods, uh, get them back into the caliper, put the backing plate first inside of this little rectangle slot there and then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, brake pad back on. Okay now you guys don't want to use a lot of this anti-seize as a little bit goes a long way but what you want to do is make sure that when you depress these rods here you want to make sure that they go up and down nice and smoothly just like that. Okay so a little trick that I'm going to show you guys will make putting this back onto your machine so much easier guys. With these two little rods that metal backing plate under there and the brake pad when you try to put this on sideways back onto your machine a lot of times you're going to find that little pieces are going to fall out your brake pads going to fall out one of your rods is going to fall out so I'm going to show you how to put this back together nice and simple and my little simple trick guys starts out with a little bit of green painters tape so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little strip of tape we're going to start here and we're going to go underneath to the same spot on the other side of this that'll hold your little plate and your uh, brake pad into position now this thing is positional guys so what you want to make sure is that uh, you have the point up here at the top and the little uh, deformation there at the bottom and your little spacer that goes on the left side your uh, bolt on the other side does not have the spacer so basically you guys just want to take your uh, tape and put it like this have a little bit of overhang on the top and the bottom once you get these bolts here tighten down we're gonna lift up the tape at the top we're gonna lift up the tape at the bottom and we're gonna pull the tape from the bottom right out and it'll be super simple guys okay so as I was saying guys sometimes when you go to put the caliper back onto your machine because you have to hold it sideways to get your bolts in a lot of times either these little rods pop out or your brake pad and that little backing plate pop out. So the tape trick works awesome, guys. Okay, so as you guys can see, our rotor still moves freely as our bracket is still off and there is no pressure on these little rods here. So the next step is you're just gonna pull your tape down like that on the bottom and pull your tape on the top up as well, just until you get it peeled right back. And then guys, you should be able to come underneath and in one foul swoop, you should be able to pull your tape right out. Now a little piece tore off, but that's no big deal. We should be able to get it right out here at the top. So now what we're gonna do guys is uh, bring our bracket back up and over and we're gonna connect that over top of our threaded rod right like that. Now just to show you guys so you guys get a little bit uh, better understanding of how this works. As I said, when you push on your brake pedal it pulls your brake lever right there and it rotates this twisted piece of flat bar. So when that rotates just like that, it puts pressure on those rods that we got the anti-seize on and those rods then put pressure on that backing plate which then puts an even pressure on the brake pad which then pushes the brake pad up against your rotor right there. So again guys, we're gonna go ahead and uh, push this all the way back uh, it's still under a little bit of spring tension at the back there, so uh, you're going to have to, you know, try to work it on, but it'll go on. You shouldn't have to remove that spring. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and uh, tighten up 
our first nut and then get our locking nut, that's the second nut, over top of that. Now, how firm your brakes is going to be all depends on how tight you put that first nut on. So uh, I'll get to that once I get all that on. Okay, so now that we have our nut, our first nut, installed on the threaded rod there, um, and again, cleaning that threaded rod up with uh, a wire wheel is uh, kind of important because it makes uh, this part a lot easier, re-threading that nut back on top. So now what you're going to do, guys, is come over to your brake lever right up here, and you're going to want to push on this all the way until the front position. Now, on this one, we have a little uh, stopper there, so I can set the brake in the full position, which I'm going to do. Okay, so with the brake pedal now engaged all the way forward, as you guys can see, the spring at the back is now extended as our brake pedal is all the way forward. So now what we're going to do is try to rotate this rotor. And we can see that with the brake engaged, this rotor still rotates, which means we have to tighten this nut up even more. And basically, guys, this is super simple. What you're going to want to do is tighten this nut up to the point where your rotor does not move with the brake pedal fully engaged. Then once the rotor stops spinning, what you're gonna wanna do is release your brake just to make sure that it does spin. Now, if it doesn't spin, that means you have this first nut too tight, so you can go ahead and back that off a little bit. Uh, it's just trial and error, guys, but uh, basically, you should be able to feel this thing starting to tighten up. Okay, so I'm now at the point where this rotor is starting to grab on that brake pad and you can physically feel it getting harder and harder to spin that rotor. So what I'm gonna do is tighten that nut up just a little bit more to the point where this does not move at all, and then we're gonna release our brake, make sure this spins, and then we should be able to go ahead and put our locking nut, our second nut, up on top of there. Okay, so like I said, our brake pedal all the way forward, and if we come down here and try to move our rotor, you guys can see that I'm pulling on it and it's not moving. So again, what you're gonna do is come up here, release your brake pedal, come back down here, and make sure that that rotor spins, which it does. So now, we'll be able to put our locking nut on, and this brake job is done. And that's it, guys. Your brake job is now complete. Now, you have to keep in mind that over time, that brake pad will start to wear out. So what you're going to want to do is uh, go back to that first nut, and you can tighten it up a little bit more as your brake pad wears. But you have to remember that eventually you're going to have to change that brake pad. Now, when you put a thicker brake pad on, you're going to have to move that nut back farther out. And uh, basically, guys, if you just follow the steps that I showed you in this video, you should be good to go. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. You can click here to subscribe, and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload new videos every week. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.